And this week in the coaching section, we're gonna talk about how you can defend the spread offense using the 4-6 defense. This is the 4-6 defense right here. We're gonna talk about some different ways, different stunts, blitzes, and coverages in which you can help neutralize the team that runs the spread by utilizing this 4-6 defense. Stay tuned. Now, there are many strengths to running the 4-6 defense against the spread offense. One is the fact that you can easily get interior pressure from these guys up the middle of your tackle and your nose on the center. You can also, it forces the tackles to defend an edge rusher, a speed guy, when you go to a big on big situation, that's a lineman on the lineman type situation, forces the tackles to make sure they defend the edge, uh, especially protecting the quarterback. And you can easily send four, five, six, even seven guys in to rush the passer, giving you an advantage in which the quarterback has to make a quick decision and get rid of the football. And it also keeps the middle linebacker covered up. This way he's able to move freely to the football in case they run out this formation. There are some weaknesses in the 4-6 defense when facing the spread offense and some of them are plain and simple running off tackle what's going to happen is say this guy runs off and this guy is now isolated on his defensive end running off tackle is going to be huge against a team running the four six and if you send the running back out in the route whether it be down the field or uh down in down and in that's going to put a lot of pressure on that middle linebacker as well as that free safety or whoever has him in coverage responsibility because you really don't account for this guy going out in the route because he has to usually stay in to protect and other different run plays also can cause problems like sprint draws or also counter trades because that's going to get flow going the opposite way then you bring the ball back a separate uh, in the opposite direction that can cause a lot of problems for four six defense now this is an example of cover one free in the four six defense against the spread offense here's how you utilize this it's man coverage across the board you got this cornerback got that wide receiver strong safety has your tight end mike linebacker has a tailback Nickelback has that slot wide receiver and you look over here at the split you have the cornerback now keep in mind we have these guys the the defensive backs lined up on inside position of the wide receiver why so because imagine if they lined up on the outside of the position get got outside position on the wide receivers you're giving up all this sp space to run inside routes like your slants your in routes your cross routes so those that that's why we have these guys lined up on inside position so that we can wall off a defensive a wide receiver and make them go where you want them to go on the outside where you give yourself a shot to bat the ball down now naturally what you want you look at the pass rush lanes right here the end will have to come across that tight end you have this tackle right there pushing up here the nose pushing in this gap right there this tackle coming out that gap and the end coming on the outside now you want to utilize a cover one situation on in certain in certain situations where cover one is probably best suited for you think about this imagine if this team had a good tight end you want to get a good bump on him at the line of scrimmage imagine a team like the atlanta falcons and this is tony gonzalez you get a good bump on him at the line of scrimmage it slows down the timing and allows that pass rush to get to the quarterback also you look at maybe these wide receivers aren't as great as getting off bump coverage so that's why you utilize bump uh, man because you want to get these guys in a situation where you again it slows down the timing of an offense and it also gives you guys an opportunity to get more pressure on a quarterback especially if a team runs a lot of short routes like slants the crossing routes the dig the uh, short in routes this type of coverage will help weaken that type of awesome offensive attack and help get, get you guys behind the line of scrimmage and sacking the quarterback now where this defense could be a weakness is where you is plain and simple by alignment you look at it imagine if this tailback came out this way in the flat it's going to be tough for this middle linebacker to cross across all that garbage to get to this point of attack right here and this running back nine times out of ten can make this linebacker miss so that's a weakness and you also look at what if these guys do beat man coverage or what if they excel in man coverage in that situation and they get off man bang bang get outside or force him out and go in now you have a free release to the uh to the football you have all this space for the free safety to cover and the free safety won't be able to adequately cover two or three streak routes that safety has to pick one and either one he chooses can be the wrong will be the wrong decision so it depends on when you plan to use cover one free my suggestion would be utilize this inside the 20 yard line against a team that has weaker wide receivers that can't get off bump press or a team that has an outstanding tight end and you should be in a good situation now this is a three deep zone with five 
people in coverage underneath. This is a coverage zone. Again, this is more desirable against a team that loves to throw the football to the flats or even anticipating this Mike linebacker being in man coverage. The only weakness of this defense would be if you need a, you need to get a pass rush, you're only getting three guys rushing a quarterback. But this is a defense that also is very, very strong against a short pass attack, a team that runs at 90 protection, your slants, your, uh, your hooks, your in, um, your drag routes and crossing routes. This is an excellent coverage forward. Here's how it's set up. You have your base front. Guys are a little bit close to the line of scrimmage and they're head up. You notice the backs are, the defensive backs are head up on the wide receivers. Right here, this cornerback has his deep third. This cornerback here has this deep third. And when we say third, they only have a third of the back half of the defense to cover. When we say cover two, they have two halves of the field to cover. But this is a deep third. This free safety also has his deep third. The end drops to the flat, so he has flat coverage. That negates the swing pass of the team that likes to throw the swing pass out. This end right there takes that away. That end also, this end also has the, on the other side, has the hook, the uh, hook coverage. Flat coverage right here. This tackle comes around and gets that rush. This guy pushes through the middle of that, that offensive line. This tackle comes around and get that rush as well. And he has the hook zone as well too. And this middle linebacker also has his middle hook. So he's covering everything that's coming across the middle. So effectively you get five guys in underneath coverage. Again, the only weakness would be three guys rushing a quarterback. So if that quarterback you know, has just enough time, he could probably find a lot of these targets deep down the field. Uh, one way you could beat cover three is a lot of combo routes. But again, for the sake of this, this footage right here and defending the spread offense with the four six defense, Cover three, five underneath zone should be effective, especially with a team like to throw to the flats a lot because you have the end sitting out there, end sitting out there. And it also puts a lot of pressure on a team that loves to get people out there in a the pass rush. When you need eight defenders in coverage, this is a great defense to run against the spread offense. Now, this is a free safety zone, but it's another way you can stop a team with the spread offense. You see a lot of times teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers or even the Baltimore Ravens utilize a lot of free safety zone blitz schemes to neutralize a lot of big wide passing attacks. And in college you see teams that run the spread offense defensive coordinators are utilizing this type of blitz a lot to stop these guys and here's how it's set up you see right here again always your base spread set how it's set up when you zone blitz right here boom this end right here is coming off the edge bringing that pressure this guy drops back in the hook to curl coverage he shows shows blitz but then drops back into the curl curl zone the tackle is pushing up that gap nose tackle again pushing then dropping to the middle hook the curl as well uh, you got the tackle pushing up the b gap in coming around the end over here the nickel back dropping into zone this cornerback has a half of the field this cornerback as well has a half of the field and the, where the key is the free safety is on a delayed blitz and where it's coming he's going to creep up creep up creep up creep up and at the snap of the ball shoot that a gap right there and that's where you get your blitz pressure from and this middle linebacker again is coming up the a gap as well so now you have three guys pushing that inside pressure. So that's another strength of this, this zone blitz is you're getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. You're getting six guys to rush the quarterback and you also force a quick pass. That's why you want, that's why zone blitzing is key. You force a quick pass, you dictate where the ball is gonna go. That's why it's a huge success. And the delayed free safety blitz is always tough to pick up. As a former running back myself, the worst thing I wanted to see was a free safety on the delayed blitz because nine times out of 10, I would have to stay in and block and I couldn't get out into the route. So it's gonna be tough to pick up because that's gonna be his guy to pick up that guy on that blitz. But a weakness to the, you know, as always, when you have a strength, you also have weaknesses behind it. Weaknesses to zone blitzing, number one, if this back goes out into the backfield, goes out of the backfield, this, it forces these quick, these quick edge rushes to peel back on the blitz and cover that guy. And that's a, that's a touchdown waiting to happen. Also, you leave no free safety help. So if these guys, by some chance, pick up the blitz, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown but again this is a good defense to run when you want to force a quick throw also when you're facing a team that has a great tight end because you're going to force that guy to throw that football quick to that tight end and you, you have so many people around the, the line of scrimmage to make the tackle that's going to force his, that's going to force the guy's hands and give you guys an advantage to defend the spread now with all that passing talk you know you got to stop the run if you don't stop the run in any type of defense you run you're going to get beat down like you stole something so stopping the run in the 4-6 defense when defending a, a team that runs the spread is 
it's all about heart, want to, and attitude. You gotta wanna stop the run. You're gonna hear me say that a lot when we talk about teams playing each other. You gotta want to stop the run. But in the 4-6 defense with only three down linemen, it's all about run fits and confusing the offensive line. The way you do that was a lot of with a, is with a lot of nose and tackle games. When we mean games, we mean a lot of stunts. So let's say right here, basic front right there, your basic five protection. You have your three, your TNT, your tackle nose, and another tackle on the outside with the backer right there. So let's say right here you want to pressure certain gaps. It's all about a cross. Let's say you want to cross left. So let, right here, when we say cross, you take this guy right here, this tackle goes in first. You know, he comes in right there, he puts pressure. This guy starts like he's gonna come in, but then he loops around right there. What that does is causes, he crosses face of this tackle, I mean this guard, and that puts a lot of pressure on him. The guard has to pick. Hopefully he picks the wrong one. Whoever he doesn't pick, the guy is running free to the quarterback. So again, it's, you run crosses and stunts like this across the line of scrimmage. You can, you can even have a loop. Let's say right here you wanna get this guy, let's make some corrections right here. Let's say you wanna get a loop left, right? And now it's, it's simple. You know, you get these guys coming, this gap, this gap. He start like he's coming and then come back around that way. Across, a, coming across the phone base. Now you have to be agile and quick to make this happen. But a lot of times, that's all you have to do to confuse the run blocking assignments to get these big bodies moving different ways and to get these guys thinking up front and allows his linebackers to make a key play free flowing to the football. Check out more coaching videos at footballgameplan.com slash coaching or check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan and check out the Football Game Plan radio show airing Saturdays at blogtalkradio.com slash footballgameplan Saturdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time.